Hey guys, so today I wanted to record a video about how to use cursor and AI agents to develop your Shopify uh, theme on your store. And so the reason that you might want to do this is it's going to radically speed up your development workflow and there's a lot less that you're going to actually have to offload to your developers because cursor allows even someone who is low to no code to really start uh, getting their hands dirty with theme files. The different topics that we're actually going to cover in today's video is first we're going to set up uh, a connection via Git and GitHub with Shopify and that way it'll allow you to use uh, custom tooling like cursor on your actual local machine and sync the changes with your theme on Shopify. Using cursor as a code editor much easier and then the final thing that we're going to cover is I'm going to give you my own personal prompting tips for cursor. And so I've been coding Shopify sites for the last five years. And so there's certain things that I've learned doing that and then working with cursor that you might find useful when it comes to trying to build out your own theme. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so let's get started with hooking up GitHub and Git with our live theme on our store. So you'll notice I'm just here in the admin panel of my development store here. And so from here you want to go down to this online store button here and that should take you straight to the themes tab in your online store panel. What you'll notice is I have a bunch of different themes here. You're going to take your live theme here and you want to hit this icon here and then hit this download theme file button here. It's going to send an email to the admin email of the store and you want to download the code or the files that that email contains and then once you have that done, I'll see you guys in the next step. Okay, so the next step, you want to have already created a GitHub account. If you have not, you wanna hit the sign up button and then go through the process of, of setting it up. But if you have already created a GitHub account, you should get navigated to your admin panel of your GitHub. And I want you to just click this new button here to create a new repository. And so we're going to just name the repository something related to the theme name and maybe the store that it's on. And then just leave all of this the default, except for change the visibility to private here, and then go ahead and hit create repository. Once it's created the repository, it's going to instruct you how to actually push an existing repository from the command line to this repository. And so that's what we're gonna end up doing with those theme files that we downloaded earlier. Okay, so you'll see here that I actually have those theme files that I downloaded earlier from my store right here in my downloads folder. And so I'm gonna go ahead and extract those into their own folder. I'm gonna rename that folder uh, the same as what I named my uh, Git repository. And then from there, I'm going to actually navigate into my downloads folder where they are located and then navigate into that directory. Now I want you guys to go ahead and initialize the Git repository. And then we're going to copy paste these commands into that terminal window. Let me just go ahead and see here. So we wanna add everything, git commit and then initialize, we'll say initial commit here. And so we're adding everything and then with the commit message, initial commit, and then we wanna go ahead and push that. We need to set the upstream like it's telling us, origin main. Okay, so it's set and it's pushed and now what you should see when you refresh here is that it actually has these theme files. So now that those are uploaded, we're gonna go back to our admin here and then we're gonna hit this import theme. We're gonna go ahead and connect from GitHub here. And if you don't have an account here, you're gonna hit add account. And from there, you're going to confirm the access. And when it asks you which repositories that you want to allow access from Shopify, either select all repositories or select specifically the repositories that you're going to sync with Shopify. But once you've done that, you should have your account here and then go ahead and search for the specific repository that we set up and then go ahead and connect with main here. It's gonna go ahead and connect it. And once it does that, I'm actually going to publish this theme here. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to set up the Shopify CLI. And so what I would recommend here is installing NPM on your machine. And so if you don't already have that installed, there's a ton of different tutorials 
across the internet you can follow to install that. But once you have that installed, you want to run this command. And then you just want to make sure that when you type Shopify, after you've installed this, something like Shopify version, that actually returns a version there. But once you've done that, we can actually go ahead and open up this repository. So I'm in that base directory that we downloaded earlier. And I just type cursor dot. That's going to open up this repository inside the cursor editor. And from there, now we have access to our theme files and we can edit them. And we can also use the agents panel and cursor. So we're going to get into that in a second after we set up all the relevant extensions that I use for Shopify front end theme development. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and take you through uh, my extensions panel here. And so not all of these are for front end theme development for Shopify, uh, but I will specifically point out the ones that are. None of these so far are, but we want this. So this Shopify liquid extension here, uh, it's created by Shopify themselves. And this is going to give you code auto completions for Liquid. Uh, there's another one by Frankie Lau, which is sort of similar, but it just gives you auto completions for uh, keywords in Liquid. You know, obviously a lot of these like Rainbow CSV and like Prettier and all these different types of things, you guys can look into each of them. Just pause the video and browse them, but necessary for front end the theme development as much as these two right here. Okay, so from here, once we actually have the CLI downloaded, uh, we can actually go ahead and run our development environment preview of our Shopify theme here. So that's going to be Shopify theme dev slash slash or dash dash store. And then whatever store my Shopify URL, this theme is tied to. So mine is willmizback.myshopify.com. And you wanna make sure that you're actually logged in to your account properly. If you're not, and it gives you this sort of air, you wanna hit Shopify auth log out. And then from there, rerun that command and it's gonna have you log in. So I'll see you guys uh, back here once I've logged in. Okay, so you can see that I've logged in. It's having me enter my store's password. That's the front end password that your theme is gated through. So now you can see that it's actually going to run the preview. So if I go ahead and uh, hit T here, it will bring up the preview of my store. And I can also get into the customizer of this development environment by hitting E and that should load my customizer here. And so yeah, you can see that we're all set up here. And so now I'm gonna take you through some uh, prompts that you can use with cursor to sort of get you guys started actually editing your theme and get you to see how easy that can be with these AI agents and how much power they have. Okay, so here we are in the editor and you notice there's this marquee uh, section here. And, you know, I was looking at this and I was like, maybe let's work with, with Cursor and the AI agents to basically create a setting here that will allow us to not only uh, change the motion direction, which is, which is already in the default theme, but maybe we want to be able to increase or decrease the speed at which this, this marquee element scrolls. So the way that I would go about doing that is when I come into cursor, um, you can see if I open up this agents panel here, that there's three different strategies that I can use to actually prompt cursor. So I can either create an agent, a plan or ask, Plan is going to create a massive checklist for accomplishing tasks that are much more in depth. Ask is just sort of chatting with this AI agent or this AI about your code base. And so a lot of times I like to start out with that. And then agent is actually going to go in and edit your theme directly and make changes. And then you want to go ahead and preview those changes to make sure that everything's correct with them before you push them to the repository. So I'm going to hit ask here. And so for the specific to the marquee that we were talking about, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to use very, you know, human readable language to basically go ahead and ask something that you would just like a, a developer that is, is going to work on this task. So we have a section called marquee. And right now it has setting for motion direction, but no setting for controlling motion speed. How would we go about uh, adding that? 
and then go ahead and hit enter here. So it's going to go ahead and read the marquee file, all this. And so it's saying like, okay, to, to do this, you're gonna go into sections marquee.liquid and you want motion direction that we talked about, which is already there, and then we have setting speed. And so then it's gonna have a data speed factor. Yeah, it's also gonna update blocks here. So we're just basically double checking, like doing a common sense check on the code that it's gonna execute. And we're gonna see whether this is actually going to work. So let's go ahead and switch to the agent mode and go ahead and give this a try and see if it works. Go ahead and implement this. So I'm gonna tell it. And you're gonna see that it's going to actually code for you. Once that's finished, uh, we wanna go ahead and refresh the customizer to see if it's actually added the setting. Okay, so you can see here that it's actually coded in air. And so this is important. Sometimes cursor doesn't 100% get things right. And so it's basically left the unit field blank here. And so we are going to have to add some sort of unit here. I'm just gonna type this, make this, sure, we can just make this X and go ahead and save. And now you see that it's actually updated this marquee.liquid. And so if we go ahead and refresh in the customizer here, let's make sure that that setting actually exists and that it actually does increase or decrease the speed of the marquee. So right now it's 25. And if we switch it, you can see that it's not actually doing anything here. That's okay because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into cursor here and we are going to tell it essentially that yes, the setting is correct. The setting now exists, but it is not controlling the speed on the marquee. It's going to understand what we're telling it, and hopefully it's going to go back and code something that will uh, switch the speed. So you can see that it's actually changed some of these files here now, and let's go ahead again, go back into here and test whether this actually does change the speed. So you can see that it is changing the speed now, that this has happened, you actually wanna go in, and in all the different files, you want to review the pending changes, right? And so, Here's our marquee.js file, and you can see that it's changed some lines in here. You can see that it's changed lines in the marquee.liquid file. You can see that it's changed lines in the marquee.liquid block file. And so if all these changes look good for you, you can hit keep all. And then the important thing to do once you've kept all of these is first of all, uh, blocks.marquee.liquid has an error. That's again that unit thing that we were fixed earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that again. And so once everything's fixed and working, you wanna add all the changes, commit them, and say like add uh, speed setting to marquee, and then go ahead and push that to our live uh, branch. And so that will automatically sync because we've set up with GitHub. And those changes that we've made will now be reflected on the main site. And so you can see that cursor is, is extremely powerful because if you were to code that out yourself, it might take a lot more time. Obviously, as we, we saw, it doesn't get it 100% right every single time and you might have to go in manually, but there's a lot of little tweaks that you could probably make, even if you didn't code at all without your developers, there's a lot of little tweaks that you could probably make just using cursor. So anyways, guys, that's the video. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot more uh, content on using cursor with Shopify because obviously that's the way that a lot of, of development is going is using these large language models and AI agents to assist uh, development workflows. So if that interests you, go ahead and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.